Okay. Now let us come to uh, transient chirp. Chirp. Chirp means change in frequency. Change in frequency with time. or you say instantaneous frequency changes with time that is chirp. And as I uh, discussed earlier let me repeat when I have a modulation happening in my system it means that my current is changing with time and so my n is changing with time which is a carrier density capital N. So my refractive index changes with time and so my phase changes with time and because there is a phase change with time there is a d phi by d t phase is not a constant it is changing with time there is a d phi by d t and d phi by d t is nu and depending on this phase change my nu could also change it with time right that is how the instantaneous frequency changes with time. What is the meaning of change of instantaneous frequency? It simply means that I am let us say I am trying to modulate. So, this is my carrier and after modulation this is what it is supposed to look like. Of course, the lines that I am drawing are the optical carrier let us say 193 terahertz kind of carrier. Okay. Now, what this instantaneous frequency chirp would mean is that when the current is high, the refractive index is high and so there is uh, the, the frequency is high, instantaneous frequency is high. When the current is low, the refractive index is low, the instantaneous frequency is low. So, if I exaggerate this effect, this modulation actually must look like this. At this so, this let us say is the envelope. And so on, right. Depending on the current that I have, my instantaneous frequency is changing. What does this look like to you? Does it look like FM modulation? That is exactly what is happening, frequency is changing with time. So, you intended an amplitude modulation, but you are getting a frequency modulation and of course, because there is a frequency modulation the spectral width will start increasing. Okay. So, the way it is quantified is the following your electric field is square root of p power. So, here p represents power okay. it is not photon number there is a normalization factor which is not uh, because field is square root of intensity, but I have converted in terms of power. So, there is some area factor which is missing here, but let us let us say electric field is proportional to e power j phi t. So, what we are doing is modulation here, we are trying to do an intensity modulation, but what ends up happening is a phase modulation also. So, how does one quantify this? And this is a characteristic of the medium itself, you know the refractive index change, the change in refractive index with respect to change in car carrier density is a characteristic of the medium. So, what people have done is they have tried to measure the ratio of phase modulation to the ratio of intensity modulation, because phase modulation is something that is non desirable when you have an intensity modulation. So, the way it is a system is characteristic at the device level there is some characteristic, but as far as the communication system is concerned what people have done is they have tried to measure what is the extent of phase modulation with respect to the intensity modulation. And they define what is called as a line width enhancement factor. Okay. This is something known for a given laser which is twice P b where P b is the bias current bias uh, power 
d phi by d t to d p by d t ratio of phase modulation to the ratio of intensity modulation or power modulation. Why should it have p b? Intuitively it will have p b because depending on the bias your index is itself different. And this is also called as alpha h, the h signifies um, Henry, Henry is one of the persons who first defined this quantified this. So, this is also called as Henry's line width enhancement factor. It will quickly help us to calculate how much is the phase modulation given that I am doing a power modulation this way, it will help us to quantify that. Okay. So, from that I can calculate frequency modulation because phase modulation is not what is measurable, what is measurable is I can put it on a spectrum analyzer and measure the frequency fluctuations. So, frequency modulation is nothing but 1 by 2 pi d phi by d t. So, 1 by 2 pi and d phi by d t from this is alpha h divided by 2 p b times d p by d t. So, if I have a certain current modulation or a certain power modulation and if I know that it is a sinusoid for instance of uh, omega modulating frequency, if this is happening at omega modulating frequency, I exactly know how much is the frequency spread. And this number is typically 4 to 7, this number is you know it is a dimensionless number, it is 4 to 7 typically for lasers. So, you can a priori estimate what is a frequency modulation when I have a certain. So, tell me is this uh, frequency, so essentially as a result of frequency modulation what happens? The spectrum broadens because you are having a larger frequencies now, delta f is large. Is that going to increase with modulation frequency or is it going to decrease with modulation frequency? Let us say I have a laser where I am modulating at 1 gigahertz the same laser I am modulating at 10 gigahertz, which one would have a larger spectral width? In one case my current modulation is happening at 1 gigahertz, in another case it is happening at 10 gigahertz, d p by d t is larger for which one? 10 gigahertz, because the power changes faster in case of 10 gigahertz, so d p by d t has to be larger for 10 gigahertz as compared to 1 gigahertz. So, d p by b d t is larger, rest of the things are constant. So, my frequency spectrum will start becoming larger. So, even though I am able to modulate the laser very fast, 25 gigahertz I told you is standard, but what is also happening is when I am modulating at 25 gigahertz the spectrum is also broad, it is not the narrow line spectrum that I am getting. Spectrum is broad not because there is a modulation and so there is a you know a sync spectrum, I am not talking about that, talking about the center frequency itself will start having a spread. So, what is the consequence of having a larger spectral spread? Why did we say LED is bad because its spectral spread is large? Dispersion, all the colors will now start propagating with different speeds in the fiber and that is a problem for us. So, the dispersion induced effects will start reappearing even in a laser because of your transient chirp. Okay. So, Consequences of direct modulation, we are just summarizing what the consequences are. Modulation frequency is high, that is good for a laser, we got a large modulation frequency, it is limited only by the relaxation oscillation. There is some gain suppression phenomena which we are not talking about, but this will happen only when it is operating at very very, very high current, okay. so we will not talk about it. The second consequence is frequency chirp, you can modulate but the frequency chirp will increase spectral width and this may be a problem for considering 
dispersion. So, we are not saying laser is bad, but we are just saying that one has to worry about the spectrum when you are doing direct modulation systems. Okay.